Welcome to another video from your old friend, Wizard Fu. Um, I'm doing something, well, I'm all done here, uh, but uh, I did something. Yeah, I did, I did something. I'm so proud. Check out the light beam. The light beam has not changed at all, really, since the last time you may have seen it. Um, but it's now using a completely different system. I've got these little particles of dust here in, on the ground l sitting around for much too long. Only to exaggeratedly show you that um, this these are 2D sprites and they're very much easier to use. Um, it's just a convenience type thing, but it really is is super awesome because um, before what I was doing for 2D sprites and some of the 2D sprites are necessary. Some of the 2D sprites I'll eventually replace with three dimensional um, awesome models. But uh, for now, it's nice to have some 2D sprites, especially for something like a light this light beam. Because the light beam is, to actually model that many voxels is crazy ridiculous. Like, there's so many voxels or something like that. A huge, huge volume. So, um, it's nice to be able to re render those with a 2D thing. Besides, they're always on top. Well, I guess technically they should be behind some some things. But uh, it's nice. They're, they're quite an easy thing to just be 2D. Um, these little puffs of smoke coming off the ground, those are probably... Things that could, uh, you know, they don't have to be, they don't have to be 2D, and those will those will get replaced and become 3D models. Uh, but let's take a look at some of this code to actually what's going on to make this super convenient and why I did it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, really, I tried I tried two things. First thing I did was I tried to create a camera that was specifically so. There's already a default camera, right? The default camera is for 2D sprites and the default camera never moves and it's always basically pointing at the lower left I mean zero zero is the lower left right and we've got a couple more cameras here there's an ortho camera and another ortho camera these are both for rendering voxels this first ortho camera rotates the other one is fixed it always stays at a rotation of zero um, so I my first instinct was to go blah 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 camera let's create a camera for a default camera that moves and for some reason, no matter how I moved the camera, it didn't move anything. And then I came up with a simpler solution anyways. I decided to use um, a node that is that represents a, basically a moving camera node, right? It's like almost the exact same thing as the view parent, which is the basically the parent scene, the parent layer, the parent node, whatever you want to call it. And this is just the same thing. The camera node is just a child of parent, um, but it moves. Um, so, so that I can place objects by projecting them with the ortho camera, right? I could take their 3D position, project it with the ortho camera, get their 2D position. The 2D position is set um, as a child of the camera node, and nothing has to be done because as the camera moves around, the camera camera node's position moves. So none of those other entities, all those little puffs of dust, and all those light beams and everything else that I may eventually use as 2D things no longer has to be moved. Um, there's no system that has to run to move all those sprites. There's nothing, there's no, it's a lot simpler and more efficient and it's just way the hell easier. Let's take a look at um, how it moves the camera in render system. It will, um, oh, uh, it's uh, the camera node. There it is. Hey, uh, that's not it. There it is. Okay, here's where it moves the camera. So this is where it's moving the actual position of the camera, right? It's moving the ortho camera right there. Here's just moving the ortho camera with its, with its 3D position. It also unprojects, well, projects to get the camera's 2D position. And then it goes and takes um, the camera pause and makes it negative so that we're, we're offsetting the position of the camera node, the parent, um, by a negative amount of the camera pause and then adding in the render offset too and then basically just setting the camera nodes position that way in two dimensions and that's all it does is just moving around the the lower left corner you could say of this camera node which is moving everything else inside it with for free uh, so and then on when it ticks the camera rot when it actually changes the camera rotation it has to go and update all the positions so let's take a look at node.cpp this has been upgraded a little bit for to handle all this basically there's a there's a couple new ch children 
um, well, uh, member variables inside node. One of them is a 2D position. The other one is a parent node. And the last one is the projection camera that's being used for this node. Uh, so all those uh, work together to create this whole effect. Um, and this is the, one of the functions here. These two functions right here are what's used to set the projection position. So a, a sprite, basically, this is a new method uh, where you're setting the three-dimensional position of this 2D sprite, which gets automatically changed into um, 2D, and then, uh, and, but then it stores the 3D position for later. So when the camera gets rotated, everything changes, right? The render offset changes, the camera position changes, everything is radically different because the shape of the entire arena has now just changed in two dimensions. So uh, that's why we have to store the 3D position. So we're storing the 3D position here, we're storing the projection camera as well, and then we update the projection position. All that is is just projecting to give you a 2D position and then setting the two-dimensional position. So the reason it does that is so that when the render system goes and rotates the camera, it can go back to here to the update projection position and reproject all the positions for any of the camera nodes. And to get all this to work properly, I had to add a couple methods to node. And that was basically, well, I had to, I had to keep track of parents. So whenever a node adds a child, it checks its parent. Um, and then when it removes, there's now a new method called remove child. So it actually can remove from a parent's children the child node when it's actually getting removed and then nodes nodes removed from parent is a little bit smarter because it says if I have a parent then remove the child rather than just removing the node in uh, Coco's 2DX's world uh, and then there's also these for each child methods which loop over all the children call a method and and have the option of being recursive so that's about it. Uh, it's, it's really just more of a convenience thing, but it's also efficiency, and it's just a huge simplification for two-dimensional sprites, which, uh, which are, I'm sure I'm going to need more of them. Let's just say that. Uh, but hopefully most of the effects will become 3D in, in the end. Um, those, those that are uh, feasible, let's say. So thanks for watching this video. That's it for now, and we'll catch you next time.